Nalla Narsimha Reddy, Education Society's Group of Institutions, Integrated Campus. I welcome all the students for this online session on groundwater. In the topic groundwater, let us discuss about the cone of depression. Usually, the water table in an aquifer always fluctuates and uh, the fluctuation in the level of the water table is of two different types. So, fluctuation is two different types. One is seasonal fluctuation and the other one is cone of depression. Water table level rises during rainy season that is because of heavy rainfall and high recharge conditions. Whereas in summer the water is continuously pumped out without any recharge. So due to this a significant fall in the level of water table is noticed and this type of fluctuation in the water table is called as seasonal because here rainy season and summer these are the two seasons in which the water table level rises and falls hence it is seasonal fluctuation so fluctuation in the level of the water table in aquifers is common because water table level rises considerably during rainy seasons that is due to heavy rainfall and high recharge and in summer the water table level goes down due to less rainfall or absence of rainfall. When water is pumped continuously in a considerable measure from a well, the level of water table goes down and leading to a depression in the water table and that depression is in the form of inverted cone like this. This is the inverted cone. So, when water is pumped out continuously from a well, the level of water goes down and leading to a depression that is in the form of inverted cone. This phenomenon is called as cone of depression or cone of exertion. However, this fluctuation is temporary in the level of water table because it reaches the original position after a short period that is once again due to seepage of groundwater through the geological formations. So the fluctuation takes place when water is pumped out continuously and afterwards it reaches the original position due to the seepage of groundwater in the geological formations. The maximum distance at which the drawdown can be detected, this is called drawdown. That means initial water table level, this is cone of depression. So the dif difference between drawdown in a water table and drawdown can be seen very clearly and uh, the influence of the water level is the horizontal distance 
to here and up to here and this is known as rad radius of influence so the maximum distance at which the drawdown can be detected so this is the maximum distance and the drawdown can be detected here so this is called as i mean radius of radius of influence the difference between the original level of water table or initial water level and the level after pumping is called as drawdown so drawdown is the difference between the original level and level after pumping so this is level after pumping so this is called drawdown if the pumping is continued the drawdown increases further and further and radius of influence also increases so it is very interesting to know that uh, all aquifers in all the aquifers the drawdown rate decreases with pumping time for example 5 feet in 1 hour and further 5 feet in 5 hours and still 5 feet in other 10 hours so in such a way the drawdown rate decreases coming to piezometric surface piezometric surface is an imaginary surface to which ground water rises under hydrostatic pressure in the wells so piezometric surface is an imaginary surface to which ground water rises under hydrostatic pressure atmospheric pressure is the force per unit area exerted on a surface by the weight of air this is one unit of atmospheric pressure is equal to 1,1325 pascals or pressure caused by the weight of the atmosphere. These are the two important terms which are to be learned by the civil engineering students during the time of calculation of radius of influence. Thank you.